Today's lesson is to use uh, trig identities to evaluate uh, trig uh, functions. Let's look at this uh, unit circle. We know that any point on the unit circle we can label as uh, x, y as a coordinate. And this part is x, here's a y. According to the Sokan Tower, we know the cosine theta equals x over 1 because the radians for unit circle is 1. So we can write down cosine theta equals x or we can write down the x equals a cosine theta. For sine theta, I can write down y over 1. So we get the sine theta equals y. In another words, we got the y equals a sine theta. And for tangent theta, that equals y over x. So we can label the coordinate in a unit circle is a CS. T, that is y over x. For the unit circle, we know this is always true that x squared plus y squared equals 1. Then we plug in sine theta and a cosine theta separately. x squared, x is a cosine theta, so we write down cosine squared theta plus y is a sine theta, that's a sine squared theta equals a 1. For sine theta squared, we can write down sine squared theta. For cosine theta squared, we can write down cosine squared theta. And uh, from here, tangent theta equals y over x, we get uh, tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. Try to remember these two very basic but very important uh, trigger identities. In the future, we got to use this uh, a lot. Let's talk about uh, cosine square theta plus sine square theta equals 1, this uh, trig identity. This trig identity shows the relationship between cosine theta and sine theta. If you are given sine theta, you can get the cosine theta. If you are given cosine theta, you can get uh, sine theta through this uh, trig identity. First of all, both sides, we subtract uh, sine square theta. You will get cosine square theta equals one minus sine square theta. Then both sides, we do the square root, you will get the cosine theta equals plus or minus square root, one minus sine square theta. And uh, if we subtract a cosine square theta both sides, you will get sine square theta equals one minus cosine square theta, and uh, sine theta equals plus or minus square root, 1 minus cosine square theta. These two trig identities uh, are very important. Please uh, remember, for this trig identity, both sides we divided by cosine square theta. See what's going to happen. Reduce, you will get the 1 plus sine square theta over cosine square theta, that is a tangent square theta, equals 1 over cosine square theta, it will be secant square theta. What if this time we divide it by sine square theta both sides? Cosine square theta over sine square theta will be cotangent square theta. Reduce you will get plus 1 equals 1 over sine square theta, it will be cosecant square theta. 
there are three trigger Pythagorean theorem. This is a one. This is a two. This is a three. If possible, try to remember all these three trig Pythagorean theorems. Let's go to example. Part one. Use the given trigonometric function value of the angle theta in a right triangle to find the exact values of the other five trigonometric function values of theta. Given cosine theta equals 1 over 3, sine square theta plus cosine square theta equals 1, we can get sine theta equals plus or minus square root 1 minus cosine square theta. Since uh, this uh, theta is uh, in a right triangle, this uh, theta will be acute angle, which means in the first uh, quadrant, all trig function will be positive. Therefore, we can write down sine theta equals square root 1 minus cosine square theta. We will use uh, this formula to figure out uh, sine theta. So sine theta equals square root 1 minus 1 over 3 square. 1 over 3 square, which means uh, 1 minus 1 over 9. Since uh, 1 minus uh, 1 over 9, we can write down 9 over 9. So you will get 8 over 9 equals square root 8 over 9. Square root of 8 will be 2 square root of 2. Square root of 9 is a 3. Remember when you simplify radicals, you will use 4, 9, 25, or 49 as a factor because they are perfect squares. So for this 8, I can write down 4 times 2. Square root of 4, that's 2 outside, so that you will get the 2 square root of 2. This is a sine theta. For tangent theta equals a sine theta over cosine theta. Sine theta, that is 2 square root of 2 over 3. Cosine theta is 1 over 3. This is a complex uh, fraction. The same denominator reduced, you will get a 2 square root of 2. Then we can use uh, reciprocal identities to figure out uh, secant theta, cotangent theta, and a cosecant theta. From uh, cosine theta equals 1 over 3, we get secant theta equals uh, 3. From uh, sine theta equals uh, 2 square root of 2 over 3, we will get uh, cosecant theta equals 3 over 2 square root of 2. We do know that 1 over square root of a equals square root of a over a, so we simplify. For this uh, square root of 2, we can get square root of 2 over 2. Then 3 and a 2 carry on, you will get a 3 times and a 2 times. Simplify, you will get a 3 square root of 2 over 4. For cotangent theta, we will flip uh, tangent theta. That will be 1 over 2 square root of 2. Same thing, you will get the square root of 2 over 2. This 2 carry on so that you will get the square root of 2 over 4. In this way, we figure out uh, all other 5 trigonometric uh, function values of uh, theta. Let's go to number 2. Given tangent theta equals square root of 5 uh, over 4. Suppose P is a point uh, in a coordinate plane with a 
x and a y. We know this is x and uh, this is y. The distance uh, between orange and P, let's label as a R. For this uh, right triangle, we know the R square equals uh, X square plus uh, Y square according to the Pythagorean theorem. So we have R equals square root X square plus uh, Y square. Suppose this is a theta. We know cosine theta equals uh, x over r and a uh, sine theta equals uh, y over r when we have a uh, tangent theta equals uh, y over x we do know tangent theta equals y over x top and the bottom uh, divided by r So we can write down sine theta over cosine theta. In another words, when you are given tangent theta, you will figure out this r. Then the ratio y over x, uh, you divide it by r, you can get the sine theta and a cosine theta. So for the given problem, Tangent theta equals uh, square root of 5 over 4. First of all, we will figure out the r equals square root. Square root of 5 square plus 4 square equals the square root of 21. Square root of 21 is a, a simplified uh, radicals. So leave as it is. Then we can write down tangent theta equals square root of 5 over square root of 21 and a 4 over square root of 21. Then this will be sine theta and this will be cosine theta. So for sine theta equals square root of 5 over square root of 21. Still, we got to use uh, 1 over square root of a equals uh, square root of a over a to simplify. You will get square root of 21 over 21. Then carry on this uh, square root of 5 equals square root of uh, 1 over 5 over 21. Square root of 1 over 5 uh, cannot be simplified. So leave as it is. For cosine theta equals 4 over square root of 21. Simplify. That is the square root of 21 over 21. Carry on this 4. This will be your answer for cosine theta. Then we can use the reciprocal identity to figure out uh, secant, cosecant, and a cotangent theta. For cotangent theta equals uh, 4 over square root of 5. Simplify. That is uh, square root of 5 over 5. 4. Carry on. This will be cotangent theta. For sine theta, we can get cosecant theta equals which one you need to flip? You need to flip uh, this one, not the final answer, because the final answer is uh, too hard to uh, simplify. So you will get uh, square root of 21 over square root of uh, 5, which means uh, square root of 5 over 5. Carry on this uh, square root of 21, you will get square root of uh, 105 over 5. For cosine theta, you will get secant theta equals. Same question, which one you need to flip? This one you need to flip. Because uh, when you flip, the denominator 
is not square root. That's the reason we need to flip a 4 over square root of 21 so that you get the square root of 21 over 4. So why you use uh, reciprocal identities to figure out uh, second cosecant cotangent theta, you need to think which one you need to flip to make uh, things uh, easier.